Out of my own discretion, I broke up chapter 16.2 into two different sections, so this will be the second part to chapter 16.2. So if you remember in the first part, we really talked about the introduction of vector fields and then doing line integrals through vector fields, and that could represent work or how much the vector field was acting in the direction of a curve C. So to start off chapter 16.2, the second part, I do want to make a little notational remark. So another way to write these line integrals. So if you remember, um, let me write it over here. So if you remember the way we would write a line integral through a vector field, right, that was the integral across the curve C, our path, where integrand is the vector field written in terms of the curve we're integrating, dotted with the first derivative of the path dt. So an equivalent way to write this, right, in a way you'll see it often written in these problems is, let me write this, so an equivalent, it's an equivalent notation is the following. So we'll still have a line integral over path C, but what this equivalent notation does is it really just expands this dot product in the integrand and uh, draws it out into the addition that it becomes, right? So if we assume that our vector field F is written like this, where M, N, and P are the components in the three directions I, J, and K, we can expand that to be, it will be the M component of F times the first derivative of the curve in the x direction, so it's the dx component, right? And then you add that with the j component of f times the derivative of the y component of r, and then you add p from the vector field times the first derivative of the z component of r, right? So in this case, right, we have m, n, and p are components of f, and then we have uh, dx, dy, and dz are the first derivatives of r of t, right? The x, the y, and the z components. Right, so all this is, is this second notation here, is the formula we learned in the last chapter expanded out in the integrand, right? So that is an equivalent notation, and that's the one we're going to see a little bit here in this section. The way I want to start is by supposing this sentence right here. So suppose a vector field F represents the velocity of a fluid thro flowing through a region in space. Right, so we have some material that's flowing through a region that could be a two-dimensional region or a three-dimensional region. Um, and for example, this could be water in a river. We saw that in chapter 16.1. Or it could be air around a wing because air uh, in physics and mathematics is treated as a fluid. So we're just modeling some fluid flow velocity uh, in a region. So under this specific interpretation of what the vector field is, there are some interesting quantities uh, that we might want to find. So I want to start with flow. Flow is the regular line integral that we've been finding before. Remember, we talked about the interpretation was the amount of the vector field acting in the direction of our path. And so that's kind of how much the vector field is flowing in that direction. All right, so that's where we get the word flow from. So this is how much the, the, the vector field is acting in the direction of motion. So how much, oops, how much F acts in uh, the direction of C. All right, so how much of our vector field is flowing? And so in this case, your no flow is just equal to our regular line integral formula. So it's how much F, like this, acts in the direction of C. Right, so that's pretty easy. That's what we talked about in the last section. To move on to the next two ideas, we have to introduce another concept as well. <clears throat> and that concept is the idea of simple closed curves. So that's three words. 
simple, closed, and curved. And we'll talk about each one. So the curve C, that's what we've been finding before. That's the path of integration. So this is talking about a specific, a specific type, specific type of path of integration. Right, that's what we call C. And the specific type is that it's simply closed, which means that it forms, so it has to form a closed loop. Right, so that's the first condition. And secondly, it cannot cross over itself. Right, so those are the two conditions for a, a curve C to be simply connected. So an example of that would be, right, that could be C that is simply closed uh, curve. Here's an example of something that's not a simple closed curve. I'll do these in red. So this curve, right, that is not a simply closed curve. It is uh, simple. Right, it is simple because it does not cross over itself, but it's not closed. Right, here's an example of one that is not simple because this one crosses over itself. So this is a not a simple curve, but it is closed. Right, so these are kind of all the different combinations of, of simple and closed curves. The type we're going to be interested in is ones that are simply connected like this. Right? So that form a closed loop and don't cross over themselves. So when we see uh, these appear a little bit later, know that that's what we mean by a simple closed curve. So the first interesting um, idea that we might be interested in finding is something called the circulation. So circulation of a vector field on a curve is there's kind of the same idea as flow. So it's the flow of a vector field if the curve you're integrating across is simply connected. So all this is saying is circulation is flow if C is of the type simply connected. So all this is saying is, is it's going to be the exact same formula, right, is this, but C must form a simple closed loop. And so the way we write that is circulation is the integral of C, right, it's the exact same formula because it's how much of the vector field is kind of circulating in the direction of the curve. And I'll have a picture illustrating what's going on here in a second. And the way we indicate that this specific curve C is simply connected is by adding on a little circle to our integral sign. So we put something that looks like that. So whenever you see an integral with a little circle on it, that just means the curve or path of integration is simply connected. And so you, the, the idea of circulation only makes sense if you're integrating on a closed loop. Um, and so that is the exact same idea as flow. Uh, but just over a closed path. Now we have flux is kind of the opposite idea of flow. So this is the opposite idea of, whoops, missing some letters here. The opposite idea of circulation. Right, because circulation <clears throat> circulation and flow is talking about how much of the vector field is in the direction of the curve. Flux is how much is normal to the curve, so actually perpendicular to the path of integration. So flux, flux is about how much of F, right, how much of the vector field is normal to C, right? So in this case, it's actually going to tell us the flux of F across a boundary, right? So how much of F 
is leaving or entering uh, a, a curve. And so this also requires, right, so to calculate flux, you also need to have a, a simply closed curve. So you need C to be simply connected. So here's the formula for flux. And this formula is going to call on this new uh, or rearranged notation for writing uh, line integrals. So it's going to be written in this notation. So let's look at it real quick. So the flux, let me write it out in full. So the flux the flux of f, say it's f equals m i plus n j across c, right, because flux is talking about something moving across it, not in the direction of. So across c is equal to, right, a line integral over c that's simply connected, the m component times the y first derivative of c minus the n component of f times the x first derivative of c. So that's the formula for finding the flux across c. So let's draw a little picture of what flux is. So flux in this case, so let me draw an example vector field. So maybe it's something that looks like, um, Maybe something that looks like this. So all the vectors are kind of pointing inwards, right, everywhere. Kind of like this. So it's almost like you have a sink, like a sinkhole here at the origin. And this might model the velocity of water falling into this sinkhole. And now if we have a curve C that we integrate through this region, right, we'll make it simply connected. So it forms a closed loop that doesn't cross over itself. Here's C. We would expect the flux, and here's kind of the convention we use. So flux is negative, or I'll start with the positive one. So flux is positive, positive when F is leaving. Leaving C and flux is negative when F is entering C. So it looks like in this case, across this boundary C, it looks like we have a lot of the vector field entering the region into the sinkhole at the origin. So because there's a lot of the vector field entering, right? It's normal to C almost everywhere, right? The way I drew this vector field, the vectors are actually going to be normal to the curve at every point. So you're gonna have maximum negative flux. So I don't know the magnitude of it specifically, but we can tell that the sign of flux for this vector field over this curve would be negative. Um, so that's the idea of flux. Let's do one example problem, and this one example is going to capture a lot of different things. So example one, and it's the only example we'll do, is asking us to find the circulation and flux. So those are the two ideas we talked about here of the following vector fields. So you might recognize F1 and F2 from the previous video. Those are the exact same vector fields we were actually asked to sketch. So that uh, we do have some experience with and we know what those look like. So we're gonna calculate the circulation and flux of these two different vector fields on two different shapes. So we're really doing four problems, right? This curve with this vector field and this vector field and then this curve with the two vector fields again. So we're gonna kind of do four different calculations. To begin, I want to just start by looking at the curve C in letter A. So in this case, the path of integration is just the unit circle, right? It's cosine ti plus sine tj from 0 to 2 pi. So that traces out the unit circle with one rotation. And now here's our F1 and F2. I actually have down here pictures of F1 and F2. So let me write these out real quick. This is F1. So there's F1, and this is a picture of F2. 
Let's see, these are the two different vector fields we're going to be integrating across. And then if you remember, our path of integration is just the unit circle. So let me put that in here. Here's our path of integration. So there's C, and then we'll do the exact same path for this one. So this will also be, oops, this will also be C. So what I want to do is, is before we do any calculations and, and find actual quantities, I just want to do some qualitative analysis of what we would expect our answer to be, and then we can validate that once we dive into the problems. So if we look here, it looks like for the first vector field that uh, along our curve C, like we're integrating in this direction, it looks like the vector field is normal to the surface everywhere, right? And that's just a product of this specific vector field. And it's leaving the curve, right? So it's almost like we have a source of water here. So instead of a sink, in this case, this might be a spring, right? So a spring of water coming out into the river, and this is modeling the velocity of water uh, everywhere in the river. So across this region here, we're going to be experiencing a lot of flux, right? So there's um, lots of flux outside of this region. And so this region uh, would have positive flux. Right, because it's normal to. And now let's look at circulation. What would we expect circulation to be for this region? Well, in this case, we would expect circulation to be uh, zero. Because circulation, remember, is talking about how much of the vector field is in the direction of C. And it looks like there's no tangential component, right? The vector uh, is completely normal to the curve at every point along its path. None of the vectors will have a tangential component. So we can already expect that for vector field one over this curve, that circulation would be zero. So there should be zero circulation in this case. And then we can come back and validate those predictions and see if they're right. Now let's look at the second vector field that we're going to be integrating over. So let's talk about flux first as well. So in this case, flux is talking about how much is leaving or entering the region, right? How much of the vector field is normal to the curve. And in this case, it looks like all the vectors have completely tangential components. We don't get the vectors written out at every single point, but if you could write them everywhere, you would see that the vectors at every point, right, are kind of following this pattern, right? There's no uh, normal component. It's completely tangent to the path of integration. So we would expect in this case for there to be zero flux, right? But the opposite is true for circulation. Circulation is how much of the vector field is kind of causing it to circulate exactly in the direction of integration, right? Exactly in the direction of our path. So in this case, we would have maximum positive circulation since at every point, the vector is going to be completely tangent to C. So we would have a positive circulation. Okay, so these are our predictions just for the path um, C in letter A. And we can uh, work the problem and then we'll validate to see if those predictions uh, we're right. So let's begin with letter A. I'll make a little note here. So we're going to start with A. And this will be our path that we're integrating. Our bounds, or our bounds are here. And let's just start with F1. So for F1, so for our first vector field, let's calculate circulation. Or, well, actually what I'll do first is, is I'll find the derivatives of, uh, the derivative of our, our curve first, just so we have everything written out. So dr dt, actually I'll just do this for all of it. We'll get all the pieces laid out first. So dr dt, in this case, will be uh, negative sine t i plus cosine t j. So there's our dr dt. Now let's write f1 and f2 in terms of r. So here's f1 
in terms of R. So that looks like that will become cosine T I plus sine T J. And now we can do, uh, let's do them in the order circulation and then flux for F1. So circulation circulation is that integral over a clear, closed curve C, which we have. We're, so now we need a dot. We need to do the dot product between this vector and this vector, right? So we're going to get, that'll be cosine T times negative sine T. So that's negative cosine T, so that's negative sine t, cosine t, plus sine t, cosine t, dt. So that's just our circulation formula. That integrand becomes zero, right? They cancel out, so we get zero circulation. Now let's do flux. So flux is going to be the line integral over a simply closed curve of, and that was um, M, was it dy? Let me just make sure I remember my formula right. M dy minus M dx. All right, so that becomes, let me just fill in the pieces. M, in this case, is going to be cosine ti, because that's the M component of the vector field. We have cosine t times dy, which is the y component of the derivative of r. So that's cosine t times cosine t plus, oh, excuse me, it's minus n, which is sine t times negative sine t. Right, sine t times negative sine t. So this actually gives us cosine squared plus sine squared, which ends up becoming uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 dt, which is just 2 pi. Oops. So the circulation we get uh, excuse me, the flux we get is positive, so it's 2 pi. And let's see if this validates um, our expected results for the first vector field. So we said down here, what do we say? Oops. We said that for the first vector field over this curve, we should have positive flux and zero circulation. And we got positive flux, zero circulation. So this matched our geometric um, prediction. Okay, now let's do the second vector field. So we're going to do the same path over F2, and I'll pick a different flavor for this part. So now we're going to do F2, and let's write it in terms of our curve. <clears throat> so F2, in this case, is negative y, so that's going to be negative sine ti plus cosine tj. Okay, so now we can do circulation of flux. So circulation that's going to be this integral from or I can just write in the bounds as well. So it's from 0 to 2 pi of, and then we get just uh, the dot product between the two. So that's going to be negative sine t, right, times negative sine t. So we'll get positive uh, sine squared 
So we get sine squared of t plus, and then I believe it'll be cosine squared of t. Yep, dt. Which in this case ends up just giving us, whoops, keep getting one, so that's two pi. So we have two pi circulation. And then for flux, or excuse me. And then for flux, I will get the integral from zero to two pi of that m dy minus n dx, which in this case becomes zero to two pi m is i component of f, so that's negative sine t times dy, which is cosine t plus, oh, minus n, which is cosine t times dx, which is negative sine t. Okay, so we get negative sine t cosine t minus a negative cosine t sine t, which is just the integral of zero, which becomes zero, right? So we know that for this case, for over F2, our second um, vector field, there should be positive circulation and zero flux, which is what we got here. Zero flux and positive circulation. So everything checks out so far. Okay, now all we're gonna do is we're going to do the exact same process for letter B. So let's do letter B in orange. Or let me pick purple. So we have some contrasting colors. So for B, R of T in this case is cosine T I plus four sine T, J. And that's from 0 to 2 pi. So all this is, this is an ellipse where the, um, the y-axis is uh, of radius 2, and on the x-axis it's, um, excuse me, radius 4, and on the x-axis is just radius 1. So it's going to be the curve, the path of integration will look like an ellipse kind of like this. Right, so this is the new C. All right, so we just have a little bit of a more irregular path, uh, but we can still do the exact same uh, process for finding circulation of flux on it. So let's first calculate dr dt, because we're, we're going to need that. So the first derivative of r in this case is going to be negative sine t i plus for cosine tj okay now we can write f1 in terms of r so let's do f1 in terms of this new r so that was just cosine t i plus right and it was the y component so four sine Oops, T, J. All right, so all I did was I plugged in this curve, right, these components into our first vector field. So we're back with F1. So now let's do, uh, let's first start with, how did I do this? Yeah, let's first do circulation. So circulation will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of this dotted with that, so the dot products. So it's negative sine ti times cosine ti. So that's negative sine t cosine t plus 16 
sine t, cosine t. Or let me just check to make sure we are right so far. Okay, yep, that's good. So that's going to be the integral of, and then uh, if we could pull out the sine t, cosine t, and that will be 1 plus, wait, let me make sure this is right, 15 times cosine t. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can pull out, um, yeah, so you'll get 15, yeah, if you just do the uh, 16 sine t cosine t minus 1 sine t cosine t gives you 15 cosine t sine t um, from 0 to 2 pi, which becomes, if you use your, uh, if you kind of do the reverse cha uh, chain rule, you'll get 15 halves times sine squared of t from 0 to 2 pi, which will end up giving you 0. All right, so in this case, there's 0 circulation across this vector field. Now let's do flux. So flux will be... 0 to 2 pi Oops, I lost my my key. So 0 to 2 pi of m m dy, so that's cosine t times dy, which is going to be 4 cosine t. So that's 4 cosine squared of t minus n dx. So that is n is 4 sine t times dx, which is negative sine t. So that's plus 4 sine t squared. Okay, so that's, that's pretty easy. That's going to become 0 to 2 pi, 2 pi, of 4 times 1. Uh, which just gives us, yeah, dt, which should give us 8, 8 pi for circular, or for flux. And now we can do the exact same process again with F2. So we'll do the exact same process for F2. in terms of our curve. So that's negative, what was F2? So F2 is negative yi plus xj. So negative y in the i direction. So negative 4 sine ti plus xj, which would be cosine t in the j direction. Okay, I'm just going to set these two up uh, because the evaluation kind of becomes repetitive, uh, but we will we'll just set up our two integrals, one for circulation, and one for flux. So in this case, circulation is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, that's f dot dr dt. So that, in this case, is going to be negative 4 sine t times dr, which is times negative sine t, plus cosine t times 4 cosine t dt. So this whole thing will become from 0 to 2 pi of uh, 4 sine squared plus 4 cosine squared, so that's 4 times 1 dt. And then flux, 
that's our m dy minus n dx. So in that case, this is going to be m, or our first component of the vector field, times dy. So here, so we have negative 4 sine t times 4 sine t. So that's going to give us negative 4 squared sine squared t minus n dx, which is n dx. Right, so that's cosine t. Oh, I'm sorry, did I already mess this up? m dy. Oh, yes, I've already messed this up. So in this case, it's m, m times dy. So that's negative 4, negative, no, this is negative 16, sine t, cosine t, right? Okay, minus, put a big minus, minus n, which is cosine t, there's so many cosines and sines, cosine t times dx, which is negative sine t. So that's plus sine t. Yeah. All dt. So there we go. So that is the setup for finding flux for that problem. And you can see that the results we found, at least for letter A, over just the path that was the unit circle, right, these results of 0 and 2 pi, and then 2 pi and 0 matched the geometric prediction that we had made by doing an inspection of what these vector fields look like and how they interacted with the path of integration C. And so that validated this idea of what circulation and flux are, where circulation is the flow around C if it's connected, and then flux was kind of the opposite idea of how much of the vector field was leaving or entering a region which is given by how much is normal to see.